What the heck is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Pack a Day Podcast. And of course, if you've not hit that little tiny subscribe button already, what the heck are you waiting for? Also, if you are on YouTube, click the notification so that you're the first to know anytime there is a new episode up. That would be amazing. But Today, without further ado, we have three more prospects that we're going to jump into. I'm going to be going over Christian Gonzalez, Deontay Banks, and Keely Ringo. If you notice, they all have something in common, all are corners. Whether or not Green Bay may be interested in a corner is a topic of discussion as well. Before I get there, just really quick, if you missed the two breakdowns over the weekend on Saturday, I did Darnell Wright, offensive tackle from Tennessee. And then yesterday, I did Brian Brze uh, from Clemson. I did Miles Murphy from Clemson. And then I also did Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech. So if you had not had the chance to check those out, definitely make sure to do so. I know over the weekends, they'll sometimes get a little less listened to or watched, but uh, uh, a lot of great breakdowns and content with those two. And I do think that, uh, you know, obviously like a Brian Brze, a Miles Murphy, and certainly Darnell Wright very much could be in play for Green Bay. So again, make sure to check those out. But today we're going to be going over three more players, Gonzalez, Banks, and Ringo. And let's talk about corner for just a moment, because I do think it's a very interesting topic of discussion. I'm not going to take up too much time with it since we do have three players to discuss. But Green Bay, I mentioned this on Twitter yesterday. Over their last 20 first and second round picks, their last 20 first and second round picks, nine of them were in the defensive backfield. And of those, we have seen Green Bay spend multiple picks on corners. In 2015, both uh, 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 Demarius Randall, excuse me, and Quentin Rollins. In 2017, Kevin King. In 2018, Jair Alexander and Josh Jackson. And in 2021, Eric Stokes. They have spent a ton of premium draft capital on corners already. And already Randall Rollins, Kevin King, Josh Jackson are already gone. They only have Jair Alexander and Eric Stokes to show for it. But even still, even with that being said, nine defensive backs, multiple corners, only two to show for it on the team, but they have two first round picks right now at corner in Jair Alexander and Eric Stokes. They also have Razul Douglas, who they put money into. And then things become a little bit more interesting. Keyshawn Nixon, of course, is already mentioned as their primary nickelback this season. So that's another player at the position. So I do think it's fair to question if Green Bay would, in fact, put another premium pick into the corner position when they've spent so much at the position already and have two first round picks, plus Keyshawn Nixon, plus Razul Douglas already at that spot. That being said, we do know that Eric Stokes is coming back from a very significant injury by all accounts, and he is not going to be ready right away. May, you know, We don't know exactly when he's going to come back, but that could ultimately be an issue. It sounds like he might not be ready to start the regular season with talk of Keyshawn Nixon being the slot corner. Keyshawn Nixon is on a one-year deal only. Razul Douglas next year will be very easy to get off that contract. There was some talk already that maybe Green Bay would move on this offseason, uh, but in all likelihood, next offseason is a potential out there. Like I said, Eric Stokes coming off a major injury and was not impressive at all in year two. In you know, after a year one that he was pretty darn impressive as a rookie prior to the injury in year two, did not look like himself at all. And then that leaves you with Jair. So as much as we would probably love to say with all the premium picks that they've spent at defensive back, corner, et cetera, that they wouldn't spend another one now, I, I don't know that that's necessarily the case. I don't know that you can just say, hey, corner's good to go. They don't need to add anything more there. I don't necessarily agree with that. And if Green Bay follows their philosophy and goes with best player available, then it's possible that Green Bay could end up with one of these corners. So let's start off. And I know I've said this a couple of times with a couple of the other prospects, but Christian Gonzalez, one of my absolute favorite players in this year's draft, and certainly not a massive surprise. I'm not giving away you know any spoilers there or anything. This is one of the top 10 players in the draft, pretty much by a unanimous consensus. He is a phenomenal football player. And you want to talk about checking every freaking box? Christian Gonzalez checks every freaking box. He is 6'1". 197, a junior corner out of the University of Oregon. He is only 20 years old. He will turn 21 in June. He can't even consume alcohol yet, at least legally at this point. He will turn 21 in June. 
he had a 9.95 RAS score, 99.5 percentile athlete at the corner position. Now, to be fair, he did not do the agility drills, which could have potentially brought him down, save for the fact that his agility and change of direction and click and close and fluid squeaky hips and everything like that on tape is chef kiss perfect. He has phenomenal agility. So there's very little question that he would have tested fantastic in those drills. And even if he would not have, even if he tested poorly, you probably would have thrown it out and said, I don't care anyway, because the tape is squeaky clean when it comes to agility and change of direction. Meanwhile, he has 93rd percentile height at the corner position, 81st percentile weight, 61st percentile on the bench press, 98th percentile in the vert, 97th percentile in the broad jump, and 95th percentile in the 40-yard dash, running a 4-3-8-40. This is a 6'1", almost 200-pound corner who moves fluidly, who has fantastic height, great weight, great bench, insane vert, insane broad, 4-3-8-40. Like he is a fantastic athletic specimen at the corner position, and he is so fun to watch. Per PFF, in 2020, he had 242 coverage snaps, 36 targets, only 20 receptions, 239 yards, one touchdown, zero picks, 85.3 passer rating. In 2021, he had 446 coverage snaps with 55 targets, only 30 receptions, 320 yards allowed, three touchdowns, no picks with a 90.0 passer rating. Then this past year, 2022, a four, four, excuse me, 441 coverage snaps, 64 targets, only 36 receptions, 495 yards, three touchdowns, four picks with a 74.7 passer rating. For his career, he allowed only 57.4% completion percentage, 11.8 yards per reception, seven touchdowns, four picks, an 82.6 passer rating, 14 pass breakups, and nine penalties. His grading per PFF over the course of his career, in 2020, he had 391 snaps with a 57.5 grade. In 2021, he had 811 snaps with a 71.2 grade. And in 2022, he had 716 snaps with an 83.3 grade. I talk about it all the time, but you love to see that curve. He was eh as a freshman, 57.5, much better as a sophomore, 71.2, 83.3 as a junior. And I would expect him to only get better as his career progresses, because like I said, he is going to check every box. So what does that mean from a positive standpoint? The number one thing, and I've talked about this before in episodes, probably going back to last year, but at corner, what I want to see is somebody who was basically born to play cornerback. You can just tell. Jair Alexander was born to play corner. You can tell it. You can tell the swagger. You can tell the intensity. You can tell the hips. You can tell the movement. You can tell how he can forget if he gave up you know, gave up a completion. He can come back the very next play. He just has that innate ability to play corner. And he looks like a corner born to play corner who's meant to play that position. And you can just see it. And Christian Gonzalez looks like he was born to play cornerback in the NFL. He was literally seemingly built for the position. He has phenomenal ball skills and has the ability to turn and lo locate the ball in the air, knock it away, make the interception, do whatever he needs to do, but he doesn't panic at the point of attack. He gets his head turned. He stays in phase. He, you know, again, no, no panic whatsoever. He has confidence in his ability to make a play on the ball. And more often than not, he makes a play on the ball. And I have not used this lame cliche cop out on any of my breakdowns so far. Christian Gonzalez has it. And again, that goes back to, again, almost like the innate ability to play corner at the position, but he just has that it factor on tape where you just watch him and you like are drawn to him. You want to watch more of him. You know, it's going to be fun. You know, he's going to make plays on the ball. And like I said, you can, you just can tell that he's just like sniffing the surface at age 20 of what he ultimately can become at the position. He is going to become, in my opinion, a technician at the position. And he just has that it factor, that swagger, that corner, you know, I don't even know, like just that, that corner DNA is what I'll say at the position. He has it. He has so much fluidity and so much confidence playing the position. He's a very sound tackler and is very physical. He is not afraid to make a hit. He is not afraid to go tackle. He's not afraid to get his hands dirty in the run game. He can play any corner position, left, right, slot, does not matter. 
And he is a, like I said, young, 20-year-old, athletic, super talented, awesome tape, check every box corner. What more could you possibly want at the position? Physical specimen, super young, super talented, tape is great. Like, it's just, it's all there. The combine was great. It's it's amazing. He like literally, again, checks every single box. Super fun player to watch. Negatives, I have two. I have two on my list. Anticipation could be better. And he's 20 years old. Again, that will come with time. As he, he already plays with confidence. He already plays with swagger. And as he starts to learn what he's capable of, he's going to start jumping those routes. He's going to start making plays that you know very few players are capable of making. And you could even see it with his jump to four interceptions a season ago after none in his first two seasons. He's starting to play with more anticipation, but it can get even better. And then just some overall inconsistencies with his technical work, where his hands are used, how his foot can, you know, feet can kind of get caught up from time to time, like just little things like that. Of course, again, he's 20 years old. He's not going to have everything down to a science yet, but he's going to get there because you can tell the passion that he plays with. And like I said, he was basically born to play this position. As far as a scheme standpoint, you can play him absolutely anywhere. He may not be the ideal slot corner. That's where he would probably play with Green Bay if he came in right now. You'd probably put Jair and Razul outside until Stokes is healthy. And then you would probably put Gonzalez in the slot. But ideally, he's probably outside, but he can play any of the positions and you can make it work for now. His ceiling to me is a taller Jair Alexander, a more physical Jair Alexander. Like imagine that for a second. The fluidity, the intensity, the swagger of Jair, but 6'1 and a little bit more physical and a little bit, you know, like just from being bigger and taller and, you know, weighing more and having more strength. Like that's, he, that's the potential that this kid has. The floor, the floor, the floor to me is Greg Newsom. The you know first round pick from the Browns a couple of years ago, who's put two back to back pretty solid seasons together. That is the floor for Christian Gonzalez. I think if you look at Gonzalez and Newsom, there are a lot of similarities between their tape. I think Gonzalez is a little bit better, a little bit you know has a little bit higher ceiling and higher athleticism. To me, that is the floor for Christian Gonzalez, a good starter already. And Gonzalez has excuse me, Newsom has the ability to become a very good corner in this league as well still. But that's his floor to me. And the comp is literally a blend of Jair Alexander and Greg Newsom, and basically the best aspects of that. Like the like everything that Jair can bring, but the size of Greg Newsom, and I think again, he can even be a little bit more physical than either of them. If he's available, all I'm gonna say, just like I said yesterday with Tyree Wilson, you run the card to the table, you immediately make the pick. I don't care that they spent another pick on corner. He is going to be that good and you don't hesitate for a second. So yes, if he is there, I am all in. Take him at 15, don't even second guess yourself. Would be a phenomenal, phenomenal pick for Green Bay and one of my happiest draft day selections I could ever possibly make. All right, let's get to another corner. And that is Maryland's Deontay Banks. Six foot, 197 corner, redshirt junior out of Maryland, turned 23 in March. So not overaged, but you know, he's 23 years old. He had a 10.0 RAS score, the highest percentage you can possibly get. However, he did not do the bench press and he did not do the agility drill. So it's an incomplete RAS score, but what we have, he tests as high as you can possibly test at the corner position. 78th percentile for height. 81st percentile for weight, 99th percentile in the vertical, 99th percentile in the broad jump, 97th percentile in the 40 yard dash with a 4.3540, and 99th percentile in the 10 yard split with a 1.45. So he's extremely fast, tall, has some bulk to him. His vert and broad jump, he can jump through the roof. And again, like good weight, like almost 200 pounds at the position. So again, athletically stud, we know that's exactly what Green Bay looks for. Played four years, even though technically he's a, a redshirt junior. Um, the 2021, he barely played due to some injuries. So that's why he had that extra redshirt season. In 2019, he had 230 coverage snaps, 21 targets, 14 receptions, 175 yards, two touchdowns, a pick, and 104.3 rating. 2020, he had 280 coverage snaps, 17 targets, eight receptions, 99 yards, no touchdowns, no picks, a 65.6 rating. 2021, only 43 coverage snaps, four targets, two receptions, 25 yards, and a 69.8 rating. And then lastly, last year, he had 384 coverage snaps, six, listen to this one, 60 targets, only 26 receptions, less than 50% of his targets were completions. Imagine being targeted 60 times and only 26 completions, 258 yards, 
Four touchdowns, which is a little bit odd considering he only had 26 receptions against them. One pick, but a 71.4 passer rating. Overall, he allowed only 49% completion percentage in his career, only 557 yards on 102 targets. Only Imagine being targeted 102 times and only giving up 557 yards. That is incredible. 11.1 yards per reception, only a long of 37, so he did not give up the big explosive plays. Six touchdowns, two interceptions, 11 pass breakups. He did have 13 penalties, including eight this past season. So that is a little bit of a red flag with the eight penalties this past season, but overall, extremely good production numbers. Again, those are per PFF. As far as grades go, 2019, he had 478 snaps with a 69.7 grade. 2020, he had 280 snaps with a 60.1 grade. 2021, 54 snaps with a 66.6 grade. And 2022, 680 snaps with a 72.0 grade. So never anything like out of this world, but never a poor season graded wise either. More just kind of in that average category. As far as positives go, a fantastic blend of length, size, and athleticism, basically your height, weight, speed prospect. We always talk almost at every position, height, weight, speed. Are you tall enough? Do you have enough bulk and build? Can you hold up at the point of attack? And do you have great speed? And Banks checks every single one of those. He can play press or off, which makes him very, you know, sought after in today's NFL. He can play man, he can play zone, press at the line of scrimmage, off, does not matter. He can, you know, click and close and make plays on the ball, go make a a tackle if need be, if he's playing off coverage. And then if he's pressed up front, he has the size and physicality to play up near the line of scrimmage. So some versatility there. He will absolutely glide around the field with his 4-3-5-40 speed. Like he looks the part 100% of the time. He is an absolute competitor out on the field when he locate when he locates the ball. More on that in a second. He will absolutely go and get it. You can see the vert and the broad jump out on tape. He has the ability to sky up and go get the ball. The height helps him as well. Um, He has that great length, which is going to allow him to play against some bigger wide receivers. He has some legitimate number one cornerback traits. It is not out of the realm of possibility that he could become a top number one corner in the league. And he has the ability with that crazy speed to recover if he gets beat. And part of that is shown as well in not giving up some of those big explosive plays throughout his entirety of his career at Maryland. As far as negatives go, confidence with the ball in the air is the big thing. He will absolutely panic at times, which is evidenced by all the penalties that he had this past season, but you want to see a little bit more confidence with the ball in the air. That's when you start getting pulled and dragged and hold and pass interference. You're not getting your head around to turn the ball and you know the ball's coming and you're just flailing all over. You will see that from Banks from time to time. And that is something that he's going to have to correct and just getting a bit more comfortable. And You would feel a little bit better about it if he was the 20 year old prospect and you're like, oh, well, you know, he's got three more years, you know, to sort of figure this out, you know, before he's like a 23 year old prospect. But like he's 20, he just turned 23 already. So you'd like to see some of that be a little bit more ingrained in him already. And quite frankly, it's just not. He also can do better at anticipating routes and just kind of reading coverages, uh, reading routes, I should say, and knowing what's going to happen next. His change of direction does not come naturally for him. He is more of a straight line runner and more technical wide receivers, especially ones that can, you know, just beat you with their routes. They're going to give him trouble. You can see him struggle with in-breaking routes at times, specifically for more technical route runners. So that's going to be something that he needs to improve on as well. As far as scheme, he is capable of fitting any scheme. As I mentioned, he can play off, he can play man, he can play zone, he can play press. He can play pretty much everything. I do think he is more of an outside corner. I don't think you want to dabble with him too much in the slot. Um, So that's noteworthy. His ceiling to me is a less physical Marshawn Lattimore. Kind of has that same build and size and athleticism, but probably a little bit less physical than Lattimore uh, was. The floor to me would be Robert Alford. I'm not sure if you remember him, former Atlanta Falcon corner. Might still be current. I don't know. He went to the Cardinals, I think. Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, Robert Alford would probably be his floor to me, like a starting corner, but not necessarily a very good one. That's probably his floor. And then the comp to me, I think actually Ben Solak hit this one, Ronald Darby. That feels very, very much uh, like the, the actual comp here. Has the speed, has the ball skills, the change of direction, the more technical wide receivers give Darby trouble. I think that is a very fitting comp here for Banks. What he would bring to Green Bay some phenomenal depth at corner and certainly some different options that Green Bay could use with him. He does not necessarily, again, fit at the slot position which means you have Razul and Jair and Stokes really as all outside corners. 
and then Mixon in the slot. You can move Jair in the slot in a little, you know, a little bit, but Razul doesn't fit in the slot. Stokes doesn't fit in the slot. And then you would have Banks that doesn't fit in the slot. So that would become a little bit more log jammed. And you don't really want to play Jair in the slot because he's not big enough to hold up throughout the entirety of a season playing in that position. So it does, you know, basically give a bit of a log, you know, log jam at the outside corner position. So for that reason, I'm not sure it's a perfect fit. At pick 15, it would be really, really rich. But I do think if you drop back into the 20s and he became best player available, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Green Bay, I'm sure, would love him more in the second round uh, when it becomes you know less of an issue taking another outside corner. I'm not sure he lasts that long. I expect him to go kind of 25 to 32 range would be kind of my guess right now. It doesn't seem like an ideal fit for Green Bay just because of the outside corners that they have. But if they do move down the board and he becomes best player available, I don't think it's entirely out of the realm of possibility. And that brings us to our last prospect for today. And that is Keely Ringo out of the University of Georgia. We know Green Bay's propensity to take players out of the University of Georgia, specifically from their defensive side of the ball. He is a 6'2", 207 pound corner, only a redshirt sophomore out of Georgia. He is 20 years old and he will turn 21 in June. So another very uh, um, young, talented corner. He had an 8.25 RAS score and did all of the testing. Tested 95th percentile in height, 96th percentile in weight, 27th percentile in the bench press, but again, he's only 20. 35th percentile on the vert, 64th percentile on the broad jump, 96th percentile on the 40 with a 4.36 40 yard dash, 53rd percentile on the short shuttle, but only 25th percentile in the three cone. And that does show up on tape and we know how much Green Bay values agility. So put a little asterisk next to that one. Again, 25th percentile in the three cone. He's played two seasons. In 2021, he had 516 coverage snaps per PFF, 59 targets, only 24 receptions, 346 yards, three touchdowns, two picks with a 63.2 rating. In 2022, 545 coverage snaps, 77 targets, 41 receptions, 525 yards allowed, one touchdown, two picks with a 68.4 rating. In his career, has over a thousand coverage snaps at the University of Georgia SEC level, playing at the highest of possible levels in college football in only two seasons. He allowed uh, or had 136 targets, 65 completions, 871 yards, four touchdowns, four picks, a 66.1 rating, nine pass breakups, but also like Banks. 12 penalties, including nine this past season. So penalties continued to plague him as well this past season, just like it did Deontay Banks. He had one sack and one forced fumble in his career as well. As far as overall grades go in 2021, he had 797 snaps with a 74.5 grade. And in 2022, he had 823 snaps with a 71.4 grade. So again, considering he's not even 21 yet, two 71 plus seasons in the SEC playing at ages 19 and 20, not too freaking shabby. Again, playing corner at the highest of levels in the SEC at a young age. As far as positives go, he has the tremendous blend of size and speed, over 200 pounds, 6'2", 4'3", Like he mixes that extremely well, which we have seen from some Georgia corners in the past. Eric Stokes with the you know good height and extremely speed. Uh, Tyson Campbell is another player that comes to mind, but we've seen these type of players out of Georgia in the past and Keely Ringo is just the latest. He's a 20 year old with a thousand plus coverage snaps with the best defense in the country over the past two seasons. His production and coverage was fantastic. You look at his completion percentage, passer rating, pass breakups, all of it. He did a phenomenal job. He's extremely competitive, a more than willing tackler. He's very physical. He uses that 6'2", 200 plus pound size and frame extremely well. He has the speed to recover on deep ball. So even if he is beat, he has that 4, 3, 5, you know, 40 speed to get back and make up for it on a play. And he is a real legitimate option against bigger wide receivers. These are things that NFL teams covet. Listen, when you get a 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", wide receiver on the outside, and you've got these 5'10 corners on the outside with them, it makes things extremely difficult. And it just gives those wide receivers a huge advantage. To have a 6'2", 
200 plus pound corner who can go toe to toe with the more physical wide receivers in the league and not give up a ton of size, not give up a ton of weight, and more importantly, not give up speed because he can run a 4 3 5 40. Those are well sought after players, and he is going to be someone that NFL teams take a long look at because of his matchup ability with bigger wide receivers on the outside, and he is a true outside cornerback, so it fits extremely well. As far as negatives go, I do think he legitimately benefited from playing with that defense in Georgia. Listen, that Georgia defense is insane. They con- they get constant pressure on the quarterback, and I do think that definitely helped him out. I don't think he was quite as good as maybe his numbers and his grade ultimately would have indicated. His change of direction skills are a legitimate issue. He is not what I would consider a fluid corner, not with the squeaky fluid hips, inbound routes, technical, you know, route running wide receivers and wide receivers that can change direction are going to give him a lot of trouble. So that's going to be something you have to note. You're going to probably have to miss and uh, mix and match corners when you have him on your team. You're not just going to want to say, all right, we're going to put Keely Ringo on the right side. And I don't care what Court, you know, what wide receiver he's going against, you're going to want to put him against the more physical, you know, possession wide receivers that aren't the change of direction guys. Because if you get him against the Terry McLaurin on the outside, McLaurin's going to spin him in circles and Ringo's going to have a very hard time with it. To me, when I talked about Christian Gonzalez at the onset of how he looks born to play the corner position, to me, Ringo is more a big physical, strong athlete that's trying to learn the corner position. Like you're just taking this incredible athlete and saying, go out and play corner. Doesn't have the natural feel for the position. Doesn't mean he's bad. Doesn't mean he can't have a role. Doesn't mean that he can't be really good, but he just doesn't have that natural feel. It looks like he's more of an athlete trying to play corner than a natural corner. And that's why I think some of the penalties were an issue and he doesn't have a lot of the feel at the point of attack and he starts to panic a little bit. Those are all things that you can see because he just doesn't have that natural feel for the position. Maybe that comes in time. As I mentioned, he's still very young, but if it doesn't, that's where we see some of the same issues that have given Eric Eric Stokes problems. We could see the exact same thing with Keely Ringo. And as mentioned, he does panic with the ball in the air. We see the penalties. We see him start grabbing. We see him get a little flustered. And that's something that you need to keep an eye on with corners because it just means that sometimes they don't have that natural feel for the position. As far as a scheme fit, I'm not a you know, super confident that Green Bay would use him right. I do think you need to use him more as a press man corner. And we haven't seen Green Bay have a huge propensity to use those type of corners. So like, I think he could fit. I think he's pretty, you know, scheme versatile, but you know, I, we've seen them have Stokes and Jair and not want to play press man. They want in, in Razul, right? So like they would have another guy that can come up and, and play physical at the line of scrimmage. Just doesn't seem like they're super interested in actually doing that. So I'm not sure that they would use him to the best of his ability. And just like Banks, I think he's an outside corner. I don't think he's a slot guy. So we start getting in that log jam again at the outside corner position. To me, his ceiling is a better Tyson Campbell. His floor is a faster Amani Arurie, and his comp is a blend of Tyson Campbell and Eric Stokes. What he would bring to Green Bay, easy for me to say today, uh, tackling and physicality. I think he would be a one-for-one replacement for Eric Stokes on the outside, but probably be a little bit more physical than Stokes is while Stokes recovers from injury. But then, like I said, after that, you start getting into a little bit of a numbers game of like, all right, who's actually going to play on the outside at corner? Who's going to play in slot? And that becomes a bit more complicated. Uh, Would Green Bay be interested? In round two, maybe, but I do think that agility score is probably going to be a major red flag. And there is a real chance that he could potentially go end of round one before Green Bay has the opportunity to even select him in round two. Um, 15 would be too high. And, you know, this is a player that Georgia background, speed, 6'2", physical, premium position that I do think Green Bay could have some interest in. They just have to get over that agility testing, which again, has been pretty important to them in the past. Overall, Gonzalez, you take him in a heartbeat if he's there at 15. Ringo, I think there's an outside chance Green Bay would take him if he's there in round two. And then Banks, if he is there in round two, I think they would absolutely take him or at least consider him. If they move you know, down pretty far in round one, he also could potentially be in play there. Maybe if they moved up in round two, that could be an option as well. Uh, but more likely it would you know, have to be probably Banks gets to their spot in round two and they would take him there. Ringo, I think there's less of a possibility and Gonzalez would just have to somehow make it to 15. And then if so, I think absolutely they would take him. That does it for my corner breakdown today. Still have a couple corners to go. We're going to be going over Witherspoon and Porter soon, so keep an eye out for that. I'll be right back here tomorrow with an all-new episode, but until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.